as you get ready for the opener on Sunday, the five, the starting five that you've got on the offensive line, what's the confidence level in them, and how do you think they've kind of come together uh, through this, uh, through to this point? Yeah, I think that there's been a lot of good things. I think that there's, you know, like any other game or plays, there's going to be ones that we wish we had back. Um, but I do see the, the building a unit. I think that um, the confidence level will be high. You know, we for everybody, when we, when we get to Sunday, you know, we have to build that through the week uh, in our preparation um, based on what, what we think we're going to get from the Saints and, and how we want to play the football game. <clears throat> Mike, what's the challenge like uh, as you prepare for week one with so many maybe unknowns? Well, you have to be sound. You know, I think you have to be sound. I don't think you can, um, you know, think that you're gonna, there's going to be some uncarded, unscripted looks that defensively you're going to have to, you know, defend. There's, there's going to be some fronts and some things that, that we face from our, you know, offensively that uh, we'll have to work through our rules, whether that's uh, pressure, you know, whether that's a, it's a coverage adjustment, um, but that always happens and making sure that we're sound and that we, you know, our operation and our execution, substitution, all, all those things are, are good and that give you a chance to at least execute the play. When you prepare for a team with a new quarterback, do you go, you, you focus more on the Saints and the system that they've run or do you go back and look at his tendencies from when he was with the Raiders? Well, I think probably with a veteran quarterback, there's probably going to be some concepts that, you know, he, he, you know, Derek really likes or that he's really comfortable with. But, you know, also I think that there's an element to, to what the Saints have done and, and will do. Um, but I would imagine that there's some things that, that Derek's like through his, his career that, that he would want to put in there. I think Gibson is still a work in progress. We talked last time. Is that what do you like about him and, and specifically maybe a 3 4 six? What's good with him? A work in progress. Well, I mean, I think it's just a veteran. It's a guy that's played in this league, who's who's produced in this league, um, you know, with a, with a certain skill set and how he develops or how he, you know, acclimates himself uh, to to our program and what we're doing. And as soon as he can determine a role, well, then we'll see where we go from there. Bringing in a guy on defense, maybe <clears throat> like that, make it, it being on defense make it easier for a guy to get up to speed since you're kind of chasing the quarterback and and things like that. Yeah, but there's also still responsibilities that you have to know and alignments that you have to understand, and um, you know whether you're working with somebody else or games, and you know so if it was just a, a base rush and we just lined them up out there on one of the tackles, that that would probably be. Um, easy to do but then you know there's just a lot more you know things that he'll have to know here you know hopefully sooner rather than later what are you going to be looking at this week when it comes to deciding to be ready um, always how they respond to practice and you know he'll do he'll do more today and he's added more you know each day i would say since last week and you know was diligent in his rehab and worked hard to get back so um, again we have a little longer week I have to be conscious that, you know, we're working our execution throughout the week, but also, you know, being mindful that that it is a longer week and that we're um, we're ready to go for Sunday. Still <clears throat> you said a couple of weeks ago about covering kicks being the hardest hardest thing, but you guys Block, blocking for him, the kickoff return. I we can cover kicks. I could cover a kickoff. Okay. Yes. All right. Never mind. You know, what I mean that blocking thing, right? Where you're dropping back. And guys are hauling 20 miles an hour at you. That's that's the hardest skill, you know. When you're dropping back, and you have to, you know, turn around, plant, see R3 loop behind R4, you know, going to get them, backside block, you know, all those single blocks on the kickoff return is what's difficult and what shows up throughout the league, right? Whether it's missing a block or a holding call or any any of those things. So that would be to me uh, one of the tougher skills. To be so good at, at the other side of it is is that I don't want to say is there a frustration there, but don't you learn one from the other? No, because it's a completely different, you know, spatial where these are linebackers and safeties. The majority of them sometimes there's a, a running back out there where you're you're 
you're going forward and you're attacking and you know it's a four pad covering a kickoff's like a 40 yard pass rush right you're trying not to lose you know speed you're trying to stick and avoid um as opposed to now you're you're playing offensive linemen with a lot of different space and a, and a fast player so just because you can cover a kickoff, I wouldn't say that that necessarily translates to being able to do it. Now you have to rep it and understand, maybe understanding how the guy is going to try to avoid based on your leverage or where the kick is. You know, some of that may be able to help, but it's still getting it done without grabbing a guy or tackling him. Is that when you like to pop up inside the pie, putting the pressure on them to do something that's very difficult to do? Well, if you can cover them, I mean, if you have confidence with 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 your group uh, and, and being able to cover kickoffs, uh, certainly be able to to pin them inside the twenty. Every yard matters. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll see how it goes. You know what you've seen up to this point from your guys in practice and in the preseason. Now that it's game week, what do you want to see from this group this week? Well, to continue to build momentum. Uh, all the way up until the game through through our energy that we show up with work today like we have so far uh, through our execution of practice you know that that's what the whole goal is is to is to continue to build momentum uh, throughout the week how much does it change things for, for jack and aziz to, to not have alvin out there for the saints well for any of us i mean it's a, it's a matchup you know i mean he's a talented player uh whether they run the football with them or throw it to him, create plays in space. Saw, saw it all over the preseason when he played uh, screens or option routes or vertical routes. and So it, I think that would, have, that would fall on everybody. Superdome is one of the <coughs> loudest stadiums in the NFL. You, with this group, you haven't really done that, obviously, in the preseason. Uh, are you just interested how do you prepare them for it and how much are you well we'll try to prepare for it and being able to you know handle the road environment uh, week one you know with being excited to, to go out there and play but but also understanding that how we communicate and you know come off the football and and work with somebody next to us and everybody's communication and the operation so certainly will be um, important for us to practice it Tell, I guess, the first year guys about the bump in intensity and, and heightened awareness on everything in, in week one, or maybe from the preseason to the regular season, just the change. Um, we'll, we'll get there towards the end of the week. You know, I'll have conversations with them, and you know, th those those players will have will have different conversations with them. Did you guys decide on number two yet? Number two quarterback? No, not yet. How about captains, Mike? Um, let you know tomorrow. With the quarterbacks, just kind of what do you want to see in practice before making that decision? Um, you know, I think a lot of it is based on the game plan, of, you know, about how we feel like who, who would step in there and help us. And, you know, Will's been out a little bit, but excited to get him back this week and continue with, with Malik's maturity. And um, we'll, we'll kind of see where it goes at the end of the week. So good on, on defense. Well, they're sound, a very good scheme. They got very good players. They have veteran players that have continued to produce at a high level uh, for a number of years. You know, Cam Jordan, Demario Davis, um, Honey Badger, Lattimore, you know, mixed in with some some younger players. You know, Werner's, you know, excellent player. You know, Marcus May is, is been a very productive safety. So um, they, they put pressure on the quarterback. You know, DeMario does a great job on, on third down in that role, and Cam Jordan is constantly there. You know, Granderson and Turner, um, hard chargers, a lot of length on the outside. So they, they're sound, and they have the ability to, to put pressure on your quarterback. You've got a guy like Dennis. He's a consistent track record of what he's done defensively over the years. Do you feel like you pretty much know what they're going to do? Or when it's week one, do you also expect several wrinkles? That maybe well, we'll see how the game evolves. I'm sure they'll have some things that they've wanted to add uh, over the course of the offseason. Um, but they have been very successful in, in what they do. And they mix coverages, and they're pretty proficient. Um, Post-safety man, post-safety zone, split safety. So they, they, you'll, you'll see all of those. 
and uh, and they do a nice job with them. How much more well suited is Aaron now and comfortable in the middle? Um, and, and what's your kind of expectation for him as 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 the pivot, and kind of the center of the whole thing? Well, I think he's very comfortable. I think that he's um, taken you know leadership role in that room and communicating up at the line of scrimmage and working with the quarterbacks and. You know, I think that that's uh, something that we expected, and you know, hopefully, we'll continue to to be a great fit for him. Um, yeah, he hasn't kicked all that much. I mean, we'll, you know, again, I like what Nick is as a person and as a professional, and you know, has a plan for how much he wants to kick as a as a veteran player that's you know kicked a lot in his career coming off the field a lot for you guys, but you've got more numbers at that position. Do you anticipate trying to manage his snaps a little bit more, maybe as he comes back here? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, right? I mean, I think that um, as we get more players that, that can can rotate and, and, and sub in there and be, you know, productive, um, then I think that, that that's something that could happen. Some of Derek Carr's strength? Well, I think just his comfort level, running the offense, his operation, uh, decisiveness, knowing where to go with the football. He's athletic enough to uh, avoid pass rush, um, but but also scrambles to, to throw. You know? and so that's you know his ability to see the post-snap movement, rotation, uh, know where he wants to go with the football and, and being decisive. In your preparation for week one, and will you do anything at all different this week and try to be ready for week one? Um, it, it's just about being sound. I think it's about not chasing ghosts. Um, yeah, you can prepare for a lot of different things, but you also um, have to commit to something and, and, and practice it, and, and then also be willing to adjust and be ready to adjust based on what you're seeing and how the game's going. Uh, Kevin, how does the mood change now that it's game week and you know that there's a game that counts on Sunday? Yeah, I just think the energy is just a little bit ramped up a little bit. Um, obviously, guys are able to get home, spend some time with family. But now, uh, I think the excitement level just raises up. Uh, just everything that we're doing personally as a team, your routines are set. Uh, People are lifting a little bit more weights. People are just doing a lot more because you obviously know that, you know, it, it's game week. And I think everybody's excited and, and you know, about to kick off this long journey to the Super Bowl. You're a big communications guy. So what do you, special do you try to do this week to integrate the new guys that into this defense? You know, whether it's guys who just got here like Gibson or even guys that have been here all offseason like Arden Key. Yeah, I don't try to do anything special. I just try to do the things that I've always been doing. Uh, I think that's big for me, just being the same person that I've always been continuously every day. I think that's the tough part, being the same person consistently every day. And that's what I try to be. Uh, for the new guys that's coming in, um, just try to help them out a little bit, show them obviously where things are and, and how we operate as a team, the type of things that we want to do and want to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis. But yeah, I don't, I don't do anything different, especially uh, being a little bit more of a seasoned vet now. I kind of understand how this thing goes. So I honestly don't get too amped up or you know, I just kind of let those things happen. And trust me, by, I think, 12 o'clock, I don't know if we're going to be in Central Time in New Orleans, but by 12 o'clock, we'll be juiced up. Who maybe told you when you were a rookie what the bump in intensity was like from preseason to regular season? And was it a big bump like you expected? And maybe what do you tell the young guys uh, this year about that? Yeah, I had some vets. Denor Searcy was a safety here, and uh, Rashad Johnson uh, were both two starting safeties when I first got here. And obviously, Jarrell, Brian Arakpo, and Derek Morgan, those guys were as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it is kind of a process. You know, you go through spring, uh, it's a little bit fast, especially as a rookie. And then you obviously get to training camps a little bit faster than the preseason games. But then once you get to a regular season, it definitely kicks up another notch, especially being early in the season, week one, everybody's fresh. Um, and I think that just telling some of these young guys and these rookies, just understanding that, you know, the preseason's over with. It was a lot of vanilla plays. Teams aren't really showing anything. When you get to the regular season, uh, it's, it's a different ball game. It's going to be, you know, Everybody starters out there. It's the ones out there. So um, I, I think our guys would be prepared for it. When you look at the things you guys are trying to fix for, from last year, 
number one thing that I did you guys was, was how many guys you lost to injury. Um, you think if, if health is, is the number one thing for you guys? 100%. But I, I would say that, you know, health is the number one thing for pretty much any team. Uh, that's something that we've battled with the past couple of years. We've been able to overcome it at times, but that's not something that we want to continue to, you know, hope on and, and hang our hat on is that, you know, we can battle through injuries and things like that. It's something you want to have in your back pocket because obviously guys are going to go down, guys are going to get hurt, just the nature of our business. But, you know, the health of our team is probably the most important thing that we can have throughout this year. And, you know, I think that's something that I've always stressed myself personally, but try to stretch the guys is, you know, having your routines. And that's something that, you know, starting week one, you need to get that routine down packed this week so you can try to stay consistent with that throughout the year. Years or as a leader, are you really trying to stress that hey, something's got to be different in this room this year to stay healthy? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's bad luck or anything. I don't really believe in luck too much. I think you kind of create your own luck. But when it comes to the injuries, yeah, it, it's very hard to you know, I guess you know, hang your hat on something. I don't know. It's just something that's been very unfortunate. You hopefully, hopefully, it's not you know three years in a row. Change start to take place. You say like you try and encourage guys how to take care of themselves, and we've heard guys like Christian talking about like doing things differently. Have you seen a difference from him of the past to him this fall? Well, definitely Christian Fulton is a guy that I know for a fact. Just the way he approaches off season and the things I'm seeing him do every single day, uh, morning before meetings, things he's doing before practice. He's definitely. Uh, you know, mentally, you know, taking upon himself to make sure that he's trying to do everything possible to stay healthy this year. And, you know, right if it happens or not, I'm not sure, but I know he's mentally definitely locked in on that. And just like I said, just for myself, I, I mean, I don't know what guys are. You can only talk to guys what they're doing outside the building. I know some guys, we see the same body work people, body maintenance people. Um, but you hope that guys are doing everything that they possibly can to stay healthy for a full season because at the end of the day, this is our, this is our career. And this is our job. And for most guys, you know, this career don't last that long. So you want to put up, put in as much time as you can uh, to make sure you're you're available for the team. Issues last year, Kevin, uh, second half, holding lead, stuff like that, which is kind of uncharacteristic for y'all. Was that something that was addressed much this offseason? You know, a lot of things were addressed. I, I think, you know, that stat right there can honestly can be a tribute to a lot of things. I think for as far as the entire team, uh, we can just play better complementary football. That's something that we've always hung our hat on. Um, when you get into the second half, obviously starting fast is a defense, but then as an offense, when we get you know in favorable situations or favorable uh, field position, trying to go down there and score points, uh, not really in a situation as a defense where you know you're trying to hold on to a certain lead in the game for the entire game. Sometimes those things don't always happen. Uh, so as, as far as the entire team, special teams as well, just making sure we're just taking advantage of favorable situations and just playing more complimentary as a team. How, how much does Kamara not being out change this game for you? Well, it changed the game for a lot, honestly. He's one of the most dynamic running backs in his league. We know that they're, if, he was, if he was playing, they would feature him a lot, rather if it's in the run game, pass game. Uh, so I'm sure that them as a team, they're going to change up some different things as far as personnel-wise. Uh, what they're going to do, uh, how much they're going to feature their running backs in the past game, I'm not sure. So that will obviously give more targets to some other guys. So, I mean, we'll see what happens this week one. Who knows what they're going to do? Who knows what type of formations and personnel groups they can go. They can go out there and do something totally different than what we're watching on film. So, you know, that's just the beauty of week one. What are some of the things that maybe concern you the most when you look at their offense and, and what they do do that you know of? Well, I know for a fact, obviously, playing Derek Carr a few years, he's a guy that's going to really try to air the ball out. Um, you know, he's a really, really, really good quarterback. Uh, he's a timing quarterback. He's one to, you know, get to the top of his dropping and let the ball go. Uh, they have some dynamic receivers as well. Obviously, Michael Thomas is back. Um, you know, he's been down for some injuries a couple of years, but I know the type of mentality he has. He's going to want to go out there and prove everybody wrong and prove to the entire world that he's back. And obviously, the rookie last year, Olave, he's a really smooth route runner, uh, has really good hands, really good routes. Um, you know, he can run the entire route tree, so he's really good. And I know some of the other guys they have in the slot, and they're dealing with some injuries, not sure it was going to be availability for those guys later in the week, but uh, they got some good speed in, in the slots as well. But also, uh, Jawan Johnson, uh, the tight end, uh, he's one of those Darren Waller type, you know, tight end, in the, well, receiver in the tight end's body. He has really good speed, good hands, and I know he's trying to take that next leap as far as being a really good tight end. So they have some weapons out there to throw to, and I know Derek Carr is going to try to get the ball to all of them. 
go about studying what they might do against you? How much of it is based on the Saints offense that you've that they've run in the past versus what Carr did with the Raiders? Yeah, I think it's going to be a mix of both. Uh, obviously, I know with him, you know, coming to the Orleans, he's going to want to bring so over some things that he's always been comfortable with in Oakland and slash Las Vegas. But at the same time, they're still going to have the same offense, same OC. Uh, you kind of seen some of those things in the preseason just a little bit. Uh, but, you know, for myself personally, you know, I got to watch both a little bit. I like to watch some of the things he was really good at, especially playing the Raiders the past couple of years, things that he was successful uh, with against us that they're probably going to try to run again and at least try to test our waters to see, you know, if we've been able to fix those things. We watch them as well. But also at the same time, it's still going to be the OC's offense. So we've been watching uh, last year's New Orleans as well. And obviously the couple of times we played New Orleans as well. So a lot of things to watch because, like I said, it's pre. I mean, it's, it's week one. So, you know, being able just to – you got to kind of – cover all your bases, and then at the end of the day, go into the game, just play fast and understand that they can do whatever they want to do with their ball. As a team, you guys probably haven't lived up to your standard in week one in each of the last couple of years. Have you learned anything from what happened on those days and what needs to be different this week and Sunday? Well, everybody wants to win week one, but, you know, I guess we've proven that sometimes, you know, just because you lose the first game of the year doesn't mean that it's going to – be a big determinant what's going to happen at the end of the year. Um, we obviously want to be able to go out there and, and win the first game. You want to win every single game you're out there. Um, but like I said, man, this, it's going to be a long season, 17 games, and you know one game doesn't define the entire season. But uh, if all possible, we want to start out on the right foot. Mike just said that you got to be careful not to chase ghosts in week one. That's how he kind of described that same question. Is that maybe something this week that you guys have to maybe focus a little bit more on yourself and a little bit less on what could happen? No, absolutely, because like I said, it's, it's week one, and you know everybody's wa pretty much watching the same thing. If you got a new quarterback on a new team with a new offensive coordinator, you're watching their last year's film. You can watch so much, and then you get out to a game, and you know they don't run the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I've been there before, so like you said, it is sometimes you can't be chasing ghosts, and you know obviously you're going to get the game plan. Coach is going to put in the things that we feel like is going to help us win. But at the same time, it's going to be about us. It's going to be about the time we put in this entire summer, uh, spring and summer, uh, the type of identity we want to be as a team. Obviously, we want to be physical. We want to play fast. We want to play violent. And I think those are the, going to be the things that's going to help us win more often than just trying to be the smartest guy to try to – I mean, obviously, football is a chess match, but uh, it's going to be about our identity, their identity, and, you know, who goes out there and executes the best. Seeing Kevin from your uh, kind of the backups at safety, not too much experience there, but guys like Molden and Brown and Matthew Jackson. I think I think they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, obviously, Elijah played a lot of nickel cornerback or you know corner slot, whatever. He's done a phenomenal job just being able to transition and, and do a lot of good things back there, but also still move around the defense, have some versatility. And Mike Brown's the guy who came, I think he was on our practice squad. He was late on our team late last season, and he's came in this spring and summer, and he's really made some strides. And obviously he's been able to get himself on the 53, and uh, I expect him to see him out there. And obviously he's going to be on special teams as well. But uh, I think all those guys have done a great job, and I have trust that if they do get out there in the game, they have to, uh, they'll go out there and execute. Kevin, you've last been through it in – when you played Kansas City in the AFC Championship, nobody picked you guys to be in that game. Nobody picked you guys to be the number one seed a couple of years later. How much is that the message to the young guys as you start the season? Nobody knows. Yeah, nobody knows. You know, at the end of the day, nobody should really care about, you know, where we're being picked. Um, all those things is what drives our business, you know. People, analysts are going to say what they want to say. We're, we're going to finish last. We might win the division. We're going to do whatever. You know, none of that stuff really matters. And at the end of the day, it's all about proving ourselves right. Uh, I've never been in the business of feeling like we got to prove anybody wrong or, you know, prove the doubters wrong or anything like that. It's all about what we believe as a team. And if we believe we can be the team that can go out there and win a Super Bowl, then that's what we're trying to prove to ourselves, not to anybody else. Um, because, you know, when, when you listen to the noise, it's very easy to sway. Uh, each week, you know, you get on ESPN, you have a bad game, you get out there and they say you suck. And if you think you suck, then you're probably going to suck. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just one of those things you have to just kind of block out the noise and really uh, stay locked in and, and, and stay focused on the goal and the goal is to try to win the Super Bowl. Thank you. Um, with the, with new coach on the O-line this year, you know, how, how will, uh, what's his approach been like, you know, maybe differently? And, and how have you guys developed under him, do you think? Um. It's been a little different, probably like I say on the leeway, like how we go about things. But I feel like the message is still the same, like the identity of the offensive line, like it's still the same thing. But with Hoss, 
I say, I don't know. It's like, it just, it's more open, I say. I mean, like, I was talking about last time, like, it just, it feel like you can go back and forth, and like, y'all sharing knowledge. It's not just strictly one way, or like, he just giving to you. Like, y'all go back and forth, you got some ideas, you give it to him, like, y'all bounce back, and, and if it's good, if it's work, if we both feel confident, we'll rock with it. There's been a lot of moving parts all off season up front. I mean, how do you feel like the group has improved, maybe from the time you started? Uh, OTAs to now heading into the regular season? Um, I feel like we done made big games since OTAs. You know, OTAs, like, nobody knew nobody. And so, like, from then to now, from playing in the preseason, all the way through all the practice we've had, I feel like we done made some big games just smoothing down, just understanding, like, where we want each other to be in combos or, like, kind of blocks that we like, how we prefer to do blocks. So, I feel like we done all, like, smoothed in and like just got real familiar with each other now. Other than obviously the personnel changes that were made throughout the off season to revamp the line, what are some of the things you guys have worked on to try to clean up the pass protection? Um, it's just working them drills every day. Like these are, it's a new group of guys. So everybody has like their different strengths and weakness. And we just working drills that fits those players' strengths and weakness. And just going out there every day, just taking one day at a time and just keep repping it. How much more important is uh, second half for you guys this year? That was kind of a source of struggles last year. How important is it that you guys get off well in the second half, maybe maintain leads if you have them? Um, I feel like that's a uh, big key in this year. I feel like just starting off from beginning to end, like you want to be consistent. You want, don't want it to be just – focusing on the second half. Like, we want to come out there, start fast, and finish the same way. You don't want no roller coaster. Like, of course, it's going to happen from time to time. But you want it to be a smooth smooth transition, like just from first quarter to fourth quarter. You want people giving that same effort. If we whooping them from the beginning of the uh, game, we want to keep the same way then. Now, <laughs> like the um, I don't – I don't feel the spotlight is on as much. Like, I'm not really thinking about, like, what other people think. So, I'm just trying to be the best offensive line in the league. And that's the only thing I'm focused on. What's it been like for you? I guess when you first came in, you are probably asking a lot of questions to people as you found your way. Now you're the only returning starter on this, this line. Um, how, many, how much have guys been asking you questions uh, as far as what to expect, uh, you know, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Um... They ask many questions, like a lot of the younger guys and just even some of the vets. Like me, myself, I don't feel like I've arrived nowhere. So I feel like it's always something you can learn. So like I could be on year 10, I'll be talking to somebody that's on year 7, 8, like some that work for their body. So I feel like we all just bounce off each other from vets from Dan, me, all the way to Peter. Like we all just give each other tips and advice on different things we could do. How's Hubbard fit in the room? Um, He's feeling great. Like. Anybody that comes in, we're going to bring them in and help them on, like, with open arms because we're a unit. Like, offensive line is one unit. So, we're just bringing them in. He's smoothing in. Like, we're getting to know him. He's getting to know us. And we're working. Now that you're a center, you feel like that's kind of where where you belong? And, and uh, how's the transition been? Uh, the transition been great. Like, I feel like I belong anywhere. Like, if I was to go left tackle, guard, center, it don't matter. But it's been a smooth transition just getting back into that role and – like just gaining my technique back from guard to center and just getting comfortable with being in the middle. Did that surprise you about the transition that maybe you didn't think you'd have to do at center or maybe caught you off guard? Um, no, not at all. Like that was kind of that was kind of the goal coming in from college was to be that rotational interior player, XL tight end, and transition into that center role over time. You watch their front four at all, Aaron, uh, the Saints. What do you yeah. see? What jumps out other than Cam? Um, they got some solid players. You got Saunders. He's coming from KC, and, like, he's a good nose guard. Like, I respect him all. Like, any player I'm going against, I respect him. But you got to handle up. Trevor said last week that it was a huge week for the offensive line to get ready for game week this week. Do you think you guys handled that well, and how confident are you that this new look line will be ready on Sunday? Um, I'm 100% confident we're going to be ready on Sunday. We're going to do what we have to do. Like, We've been preparing, like, this is the beginning of the week as well. Like, this is a real game week right here. So, 
how we can uh, prepare this week and get ready for Sunday. Like, we're going to put it out there on Sunday. What's the feel in the building as you go from, you know, going to first game week of the season? It's more of a serious uh, – Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a focus. Like, you find, like – We've been in camp and going against teams like week by week right now. So like preseason, you're not game planning for a team that much. So once you come into like the actual game week, it's a different kind of focus. Like you have your set plays, your details you have to dial in on, and it's a different kind of focus. What have you seen in terms of uh, development for Peter Skronsky? Um, I seen games in every aspect of the game, like from run game, pass pro, like every week, like. He's intentionally trying to grow on something. Like he's intentionally trying to get better at something. If it's physically or mentally, he's doing something. What about uh, Spears, your new running back? Everybody knows about Derek, but what, what's maybe impressed you about him? And when was the moment when you thought this this kid may have something? <laughs> at first, pre well, I like I seen him coming out of college. I watched his college tape and everything, so I liked him like even before he got here. But like once we got into even like OTAs doing little drills and different types of things, like the kid fast. He fast, he quick, his agility, like he can do it all. He's tough, so I love him. Last few years, I don't think you guys probably lived up to your own standard in week one of the way you played. How important is week one and what has to be different this year? Um, them past year, they're in the past now, so I'm not worried about the past two, but this year, right now, like this first week, like, it's a new season, it's a new start, new slate. So you're trying to be the best. You're trying to get to the Super Bowl. That's the end goal of anybody every season. So that's the goal right now to take it one week at a time and get a W this week and move on to the next. You guys on the offensive line, you, a lot of guys here come from other teams where they were backups. You were an undrafted guy who's you know made your way in the league now in your fourth year. Does this offensive line kind of have a chip on its shoulder because of that? Uh, I would feel so. Like anybody who has a story behind them, like it's some personality behind it as well. So I feel like anybody who, like, just you didn't come like anybody that's in the NFL. They all were starters at a point in time in college. So coming from college or whatever you come from, like not being a starter, that's humbling. And so just going through that experience, like that, just off rip, give you a chip on your shoulder. I think that uh, Titans fans might notice be surprised by offensively this year without giving anything away. Uh, anything that might uh, surprise them in the, in, in the opener in terms of difference from, from last season? Um, I just feel like the only surprise we can give them is we're going to be better than last year. Like It's going to be something to watch, and we're going to do our job and hold up our side of the ground. Be a broadcast man, I have to talk to a little trash to a couple of people, you know. Tim Tim Kelly here kind of tried me a little bit last week. So we was talking. What happened? We was talking. He asked me, like, he asked me what college I went to, whatever. And he asked me, oh, do y'all still have a football team? <laughs> and so, like, after the win, when they were uh, kneeling the ball, I had took a screenshot of it, sent it to him, and I just asked him, do we have a football team? So. What do you write back? Huh? What did he write back? Oh, he didn't reply. He didn't say nothing to me until I got here this morning. <laughs> Tim? Yeah. Where did he play? I know he was a defensive defensive end. I don't know where he played at, though. Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put them against the Bobcats. We'll see what happens. <laughs>